A common application of mutual inductance is found in transformers. In this video here, we're going to look first at linear transformers, and then in another video, we'll look at ideal transformers. A transformer is somewhat unique from other circuits that we've looked at, in that in a transformer circuit, the linkage between the primary and the secondary is found only through the mutual inductance. And in this case, M is equal to 100 millihenries. In other words, there's no electrical linkage between the two. There's no current flow between these two. The only energy linkage is through the magnetic field between those two inductors. So let's go ahead and analyze this circuit. We need to get it into the, into the uh, phasor domain where this is a, our, where our source is, a, is oscillating at 2,000 radians per second, so omega is equal to 2,000. This source here, we'll go ahead and call it 25 angle 0 and assign the reference angle of our phase, the phase angle of 0 for our reference here. Now we've got capacitors, both are 1 microfarad capacitors, so the impedance of the capacitors will be equal to 1 over j omega c. Again, omega is 2,000. So 1 over j omega c gives us minus j 500 for the impedance of those two capacitors. And minus j 500 there. The impedance of this first inductor L1 is going to be j omega times L, which turns out to be j 100. The impedance of the other inductor, L2, is equal to J400. And then the impedance of the mutual inductance is going to be J times omega, again, which is 2,000 times M, which is 100 millihenries, or 0.1. And that gives us Z sub M equal to J200. So this inductor here is J100. This inductor here is J400. And the mutual inductance is j 200. All right, before we get started, let's just go ahead and take, um, take notice of the mutually induced voltages. Of course, we know that this current is going to induce a voltage across this inductor, which is just equal to J times omega times L. Now, in this or across this inductor, we're also going to have the voltage that is induced by I2 through the mutual inductance. Now, because I2 is referenced into the dot, the voltage drop across this inductor due to I2 will also be referenced positive at the dot. So I'll have a positive reference voltage here, which is going to be equal to the mutual inductance, or the impedance of the mutual inductance, which is J200 times I2, the current flowing in the secondary. And there will also be a voltage due to I1 that shows up across the secondary coil here. And because I1 is referenced into the dot, the voltage that I1 induces over here will be referenced positive at the dot also. So referenced like that, and that voltage is going to equal the mutual inductance, J200. In this case, it'll be times I1. So with that preparation, let's go ahead and write two voltage loop equations, one around this loop and one around this loop. Starting here and going on, we have minus 25. And then we have the voltage drop across this capacitor is going to be its impedance minus J500 times the current I1. Across the resistor here, plus 100 I1, plus the self-induced voltage here, which is going to be J100 times I1. And then also we have the mutually induced voltage dropping plus to minus, so it will also be plus J200 times I2. And the sum of those terms then is going to equal zero. The second equation we get going around the second loop, we'll start up here, where we have then the voltage drop across the capacitor is going to be equal to minus J500 times I2, plus coming on around the, the uh, circuit here, we've got plus 1,000 I2 plus the self-induced voltage, which is just the impedance of that inductor J2, which is, or of inductor L2, which will be its impedance J400 times I2. 
And then, of course, we have the mutually induced voltage here, which we've already found to be. And because we're going plus to minus, it'll be a positive sign here, plus J200 I1 equals 0. So we've got two equations and two unknowns. Combining the like terms in these two equations gives us these two equations, which are two equations and two unknowns ready to set up and ready to uh, put into whatever kind of a calculating device that you've got for solving this type of system, which is two equations with two unknowns, but the coefficients are complex numbers. Using whatever method you choose gives us then, we can get I1 to be equal to 0 0.0198 plus J.0561, or in polar coordinates, that's equal to 0 0.058 angle 70.94. And similarly, we can get I2 to be equal to 0 0.0115 minus J.0028, or again in polar uh, form, that. Now, V out, which is what our goal was, V out then is simply equal to the 1,000 ohms times I2, which is going to equal 1,000 times that gives us 11.6 angle negative 24.77 volts.